Welcome to my peak performance intermittent fasting fast start checklist. Now, hopefully you have downloaded the guide that goes along with this video. And if you haven't, go to peakperformancehabits.com forward slash IF. All right. So my goal is to provide you with some information, some tools, and other resources so that you can research to get all of your questions answered to determine if intermittent fasting, or at least giving it a try, might be right for you. So let me ask you a question. How much time, money, and energy have you already invested into various diets, supplements, jungle juice, powdered this, powdered that, liquid this, liquid that, and not experience the results that you were promised? I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. Chances are you have a medicine cabinet or a cabinet in your kitchen or maybe in your pantry under your sink. You probably have a lot of stuff sitting around that you've tried that did not give you the results that you were looking for. So in this guide, what I'm going to do is give you a simple way to start, track, sustain, and ultimately figure yourself out for your best intermittent fasting regimen. So let me just share a little of my story so you know who I am, why I'm sharing this, and a little bit about where I've gathered my data. I'm Jackie Elmer, and while I'm a certified health coach, I am not a doctor. So none of this is meant to be taken as medical advice. I'm simply sharing my own experience, my own research, and what others like me have shared over time. Now, when I turned 50, I began to notice some differences in my body you may be experiencing changes too. Because what I found is that I was not alone. Millions of women around the globe experience many of the same changes that I'm talking about as early as their 40s and sometimes later than 50. Now, about the same time as I was beginning to notice some changes myself, my mom was diagnosed with diabetes. And I didn't think a lot of it at first, but the more I thought about it as time went on and I watched how it progressively damaged her body and reduced her capacity and functionality, I began to get concerned because the interesting thing is she didn't fit any of the typical parameters, at least uh, at first glance, uh, of a typical type 2 diabetic. Even her doctors were puzzled and had her tested more than once. But I kept thinking if this is genetic I wanted to be as proactive as I could possibly be with my own health. One thing I knew for sure, I didn't want to end up the way I saw her life going. So I began to do a ton of research and I started with Google and moved on to my library. I read the books, right? I read Wheat Belly, Grain Brain, The Diabetes Code, The Obesity Code, The Plant Paradox. I read as many books as I possibly could. And I went to work on learning as much as I possibly could about diabetes wellness, and staying functional well past 100, because my goal has always been to live well past 100. Some of my symptoms included restless sleep, joint pain, inflammation. It was harder for me to bend down and rise back up without using my hands uh, to hold on to something or to push myself up. Couldn't quite do it with my own strength often, not always, but regularly and it alarmed me. I began to notice some stiffness in my fingers and my arms and up near my elbows. And there were times that my brain just felt like it was in a fog. I lacked that razor sharp clarity and the ability to finish uh, super brain intensive tasks that I used to be able to do. I didn't like the way this felt and I didn't like the way I felt about it moving into the future. Heck, I was 50. So what was the next 50 years going to look like for me? That's when I really started body hacking. I decided to turn my own body into a human experiment. After all, what did I have to lose? It was simply some diet changes, changing what I was eating, uh, some exercise shifts, different supplements, as I already mentioned. Well, over the course of time, I tried a lot of different things, a lot of different supplements. I tried CBD oil, altering my workouts, trying all types of different regimens and diets for sleeping better, elimination diets, detoxing, all that type of thing. You may be able to relate to that. And it seemed that everything would work for a while. And then over time, the positive effects and results that I was experiencing would lessen. Well, a few years back, while listening to podcast after podcast, 
and searching for answers, I stumbled upon the concept of intermittent fasting after listening to a podcast by Dr. Jason Fung. That's F-U-N-G, Dr. Jason Fung. I became extremely intrigued. After all, I had done detox fasts before, up to 36 hours, but it wasn't part of my normal routine, maybe once every two years. But I was intrigued, and I'm a very disciplined person when it comes to my health, and I knew that this was something I needed to try. So I jumped in with the 12-12 schedule, which was easy for me, and I'll share that in just a minute. That's basically uh, 12 hours of eating, 12 hours of not eating. And again, that was easy for me because I typically have dinner over with by 6 p.m. I'm not an evening snacker. And so waiting until 6 or even 8 a.m. the next morning was no problem. So I've been practicing intermittent fasting for about the last three years. And at the start of 2022, I got very serious about going beyond 12 or 14 hours. And I found personally that my sweet spot is about 18 and 6. My target every day is 16, 8, 16 hours of non-eating, 8 hours of what's called an eating window. But again, my sweet spot is 18 hours of non-eating, 6 hours of eating. And I'm not talking about calorie restriction at all. So the reason that works so well for me over time of tracking it and hacking it, that's when my brain clarity is at its peak, my body feels its best, and I never feel hungry or deprived. The most important thing is that you realize that we're all unique, and that's called bio-individuality. So what works for me may not work for you. So I want to encourage you to test and try it yourself. And it can take some time to determine what is best for you. There are no right or wrongs here. There's no prize in doing a super long stretch from a competitive point of view. Your body will talk to you. I just want to encourage you to listen. So let's talk about what intermittent fasting is and what it is not. 